have any privacy. I'm trying to tuck in my shirt. The tracker's here. Just a little common decency. Hey, do me a favor. Hey, sir, how you doing? How are you? Hey, ma'am. Good to see you. Guys. How are you, sir? Doing well, thanks. You're a sight for sore eyes. Listen, it's great to catch up with you. Uh -huh. uh, how are you doing? Not bad. You've got a hall full of people waiting to see you. I'm just thrilled. Good gracious. Yeah. I'm just so excited. I'm ready to go. Are you coming in this way? I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just thrilled to be here. Please go ahead. You're welcome to. Oh, no. I've got to be behind you. Okay. Okay. How are you? Ready? ready? How about you, sir? I'm doing great. Hey, sir, Scott Bridgel. Hey, yeah. Jerry Ocker. Hey, good to see you, Jerry. Oh. It's all right. We don't do that. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, we got a uh, glass of water or something. Yes, we did. Wow. We did. Wow. We did. Wow.
courage, give us knowledge, do what we know is right, because you have led us that way and you have taught us. In your name we pray, amen. 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 At this time, I'd like to recognize um, Richard Eckhart, the U.S. Army, Special Forces AP, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. in Scott's family. His father landed in Iwo Jima. And Scott served six years in the Marine Corps Reserve while attending college. In Congress, Scott serves on three committees that closely match the needs of the Second District. The House Armed Services, the Committee on Homeland Security, and the Committee on Science, Space, and Technology. Scott and his wife, Terry, are greatly blessed with four children, two fine sons-in-law, two wonderful grandchildren, Parks and Reese, to inspire Scott to make decisions based not on what is best for the next election, but what is best for the next generation of Americans. So let's please join me in a great veterans welcome to Representative Scott. <laughs> uh, normally I don't use the microphone. But uh, for some reason, I'm really not quite sure. I've got a little bit of a raspy voice, so I may use this. I think it'll be helpful. Avril, uh, appreciate your kind introduction. I am really honored to be here tonight with men and women who either serve directly uh, or a family member or, frankly, just a concerned citizen. But this is a unique opportunity, a special opportunity uh, to connect with, to listen to, and to honor and to learn from our veterans and their families. Uh, Pam, thank you for the kind invitation. Thank you for setting uh, this up and allowing me the opportunity. Um, you know, I love Norfolk. <laughs> Our business is right around the corner. I don't get much time to, in fact, none to, to even hardly think about it. Hey, Scott, but, but, Our vice chair, Kobe Dillard, he's a veteran. Oh, Kobe, he's standing right there. Well, it's hard to know he's back there if he's got that thing to his face. I can't oh, see him. There you are, Kobe. <laughs> Good to see you, sir. Thank project. you for what you're doing. And as a veteran, uh, just a dear friend, and I appreciate your good counsel. Every now and then we exchange emails or a text message, and I appreciate you. You've got a lot of wisdom, and I, I respect that. I want to thank Congresswoman Drake. Thelma, you, you can't hide from me back there. Listen, you're a terrific lady, and Ted, thank you, sir, for your service to our country through just all the, the political service, quite frankly. It's really, it is challenging. Um, have you received my note? I sent you one just a couple days ago. 
I'm not sure it's a thank you note because <laughs> uh, Thelma actually had a lot to do with, uh, in fact, everything to do with me seeking this office, uh, her and Ted and uh, military and me. And I appreciate uh, your service to our country. Um, let me uh, uh, just uh, outline what I'd like to cover. I'm going to try to make that really brief because what I've learned is that in my uh, time in public service is that the shorter my remarks, kind of the louder the applause, and then the, the longer the amount of time is really, truly, and then we have to have a question and answer time so we can get to exactly what's important to you, and I can listen, and we can talk about what's important to you. I do think it would be helpful if I uh, framed a few issues that I think are really critical uh, to the future of our country. There are things that I set out to do when I sought this office as I uh, went across this wonderful uh, district for 17 months seeking this office. I made these my top priorities. And I feel like, as I said in a recent commercial, I'm accountable to you. So I want to come back and let you know how we're doing. There's been some progress in some areas, and there's some areas where, uh, frankly, as a nation, we're falling far short of where we need to be. Uh, the Admiral touched on the first one, job creation. Um, you know, jobs are life-changing. Uh, a person who, who gets a job, you, know, you get that wonderful message, these two or three words, you know, you're hired. You're hired. It's a great thing to hear. And so I've uh, done everything I could to bring my 30 years of business experience up to Washington. One practical way, and really it's tied into national security, is this. Uh, is energy independence. And I ran on it, I said, I want to make sure that we leverage the coastal Virginia energy that we have. Um, and I introduced an amendment to, to do just that. And it would unlock 18,000 local jobs. 18,000 local jobs. I ran on it. The General Assembly, both Senate and House, has ran on, uh, has uh, said this is important to us. And Governor McDonald uh, ran on it. And we, you know, the, the collective wisdom and will of Virginians is really to move forward on that. And yet, our president uh, has, he's really the one person that stands in between us and those 18,000 jobs. Because there's a full moratorium on coastal Virginia energy, which is a full moratorium on 18,000 local jobs that are needed to diversify our local economy. And indeed, some of those are jobs which surely would surely go to our veterans. And you know, before I uh, cover the other three points, and one of them is defending those who defend us and our men and women in uniform, I want to pause for a moment. And uh, frankly, just, just slow down a bit. And uh, look at each and every one of you, those of you who have served either active duty, uh, or reservist, hard charging reservist like me, uh, 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 you know, if you made a full career out of it, whether you saw combat or whether you didn't. From one American to another, I'm grateful for your service. Um, I had the opportunity the other night to look at the service records of a, a real hero of mine. Uh, it came in the mail, it's about this thick. And uh, I'm sure mine is a lot smaller than that, because I wasn't called active duty. This, this fellow was, and I turned it page by page, and uh, I saw where he'd been on the different ships in the Pacific and Tinian. And other ships brought him to Saipan. He was on Midway, actually, when it was bombed or he was shelled by a actually Japanese submarine, uh, first go around. And of course, the uh, the, the Battle of Midway, of, of Iwo Jima, rather, the one that the Admiral referenced. Uh, that hero of mine is my dad. And he's doing great at 89 years old. He watches Fox News every day. Yeah. And he calls me and says, Scott, what's going on up there? He is a patriot. What a privilege to have been raised by Ike Ritchell. He is as sharp as he can possibly. I mean, he is sharp. He loves his country. And indeed, me seeking this office, largely inspired by Ike Ritchell. So it's this, this, this legacy of service that, that inspired me to, to serve and give it all I've got. And uh, thank you again for the opportunity to serve. Let's go back to jobs for a moment. Uh, 
jobs, it's not a Democrat issue or Republican issue. It's 